In this video, we're going to look at the button widget. So first things first, grab your button and drag it on into the page. You're going to get this as a default. And what you can do is here under type, you can choose these different presets and that's going to change it for you. But I never do this because we can style this up much better ourselves. The way we do that, if I put this back to default, is by starting to fill in the information that we see down here. So first things first, some text. Let's just call this click me. And then when you put that in, you can come down here to link. So you can either type in a link. And then when somebody clicks your button, it's going to take you through to that particular website. If you are doing that, click on link options and you can then choose if you want it to open up in a new tab. Or we can click down here for a no follow, which is quite common if you're doing it for an external website. When you've done that, close link options again. Alternatively, instead of typing in the whole web address, if you were just wanting to go to a different page around your website, start to type in that page. I think it needs three letters. And then Elementor is going to show you a whole list of the different pages you've got that match what you've typed in there. And then you can just look through the list and choose the one you want. And there you go. It now generates that URL for you. A final option is to come under the dynamic tags link. And under here, we could link to particular posts, media files, there's a whole lot of options. Pop-up's a great one. Elementor Pro, you can actually design email opt-in pop-ups. I have a separate tutorial about that. But let's just say that you've got that, you've designed a beautiful pop-up, and you want it to appear when you click on the button. Well, you would come in here to dynamic tags, and this is where you can link things like that. So when you've got your link done and dusted, come down to alignment. And here we can choose where we want the button to appear on the page. So I'm just going to put it in the center for now. And then down here, we've got the size. So don't worry too much about this. It will change the size of the button a bit for you. But again, we're going to be doing that in just a minute when we get up to the style tab. What you can do though is come down to the icon section, click on this. And now you can either search for an icon or you can look through this large library until you find one that you like. So let's have a look. Let's have one of a laughing face, I think. So we'll insert that. By default, it's gonna put it before the text on your button. Just here under icon position, if we want, we can click on after, and that's gonna move it over to the right-hand side. And then when you've done that, you can also use this slider here to change the spacing between the text and that icon. I'm just gonna put it back to default by highlighting, pressing backspace, and that's gonna put it back to how it has as a default. So when you've done that, come on back up here, come out of the content tab and go into style. And then under style, the first option is gonna be typography. So now we can start making the text inside the button looking a bit better. First things first, we have the family tab. So at the moment, the font is set to the default font for your website, which is probably what you're gonna want, but we could always click into it, have a look through the different options, or we can begin to type and it's gonna find the matching fonts. So I want Rubik. I click that and you'll see that it's changed it now up here on the button. When we've done that, come on down here and under size, we can move this and that's gonna make it bigger or smaller. So get it to the size that you want. From there, we can also change the weight. So again, as you go through here, depending on the fonts, uh, font family that you've chosen, you're gonna have different options here under the weight for how bold you actually want to make it. So when you've found the one that you want, you can then go to transform. And now if we wanted this to all be uppercase, we can do that. Likewise, we can make it lowercase. So if I just come back to content for a second, you'll see that when I typed it in, I capitalized it. But now because we've chosen lowercase, that's overridden what I put in there. If I typed it in here all lowercase, then what we could do is come back to typography and we could have selected capitalize and then that would do the same thing for us. It's just gonna capitalize each word. And then what you can also do is come down to style and then we could make it italic if we wanted to, uh, decoration, we could underline it, overline it, strike it through, whatever it is that you want. I don't like it like that, so we're gonna put it back to default. And then what we've got is the line height. So we're now changing the size of the button vertically. So we're making it bigger here. And if we want, we could then stick some more space between the actual text that we've written there as well. And that's obviously going to affect the overall size of the button. But for now, I want to put it back to how it was as default. That looks a lot more sensible. And we're going to move on. Just come up here, click the little pencil icon again, and that's saved. We can move on. We now have a normal or hover tab. So under normal, this is where we can change this color. So if I click on here, and let's say I want to have 
bit of a dark blue color. So I'll come up here. Let's change the text to dark blue. But actually, let's have the text as white, I think. And then let's do the background as the dark blue. And then what we can do is come up to hover. And now click on text color. Let's go for gray. And then under background color, go for a lighter blue. I can make it a little bit see-through by changing the opacity just down here. And then when we've done that, now when I actually hover over this, you'll see that it's going to change. And that's how we make buttons a lot more interesting when people are actually going to interact with them on the, uh, on the website for you. And now I'm looking at this and I think I've made that too dark blue. So I'm just going to come back to normal, click on this. Let's bring this back so it's slightly lighter. There we go. So I like that a lot more. And I think that looks already so much better than what it was as that default orange rectangle that we had to begin with. From here, we've got the border type. So what we can do is add in a solid border, but you're not gonna see it at first because what we need to do is give it some width. So we have all these linked at the moment. So if I increase this, you'll see that we get three pixels all the way around the button. If we unlink it, we can then put in any amount that we want. And we're then gonna get that border on that particular side. So I put in 30 at the top and we've got a much larger border here now up there. But I'm gonna link all these again bring it back to three, and then we can come down to color and we can choose a color that we want for the border. We can make it the same color if we wanted. Or what we could do is choose a color, bring the opacity all the way down, and then effectively it's a see-through border. And when you've done that, you can come down to border radius. And now if I do, let's say 20 pixels, it's gonna to start to nicely curve the button. And again, we can unlink these if we want to, so unlink. And now let's make this zero and let's make that zero as well. And now we've got a flat bottom to our button and then curves up at the top. That's quite difficult to say, flat bottom button. Bit of a tongue twister. I don't suggest that one if you've had a couple. For now though, I'm gonna put this back to 20. Let's just link these up again. And then if we needed to, we could also change the padding of the button. So for example, if I unlink this, what we can then do is put in 15 at the top I think 25 at the right, 15 at the bottom, 25 at the left, maybe 30. And now we can just change the shape of our button and get it to the size that we want, just by using the padding down here. And then if you've done that and you don't quite like the curve, you can always come up here and just increase that. And there we go, we've now got a nicely curved button, we've got a hover overlay, and that's looking a lot, lot better. From here, what we could do is add in an animation to the button. So come on up to advanced. And now depending on whether you have the free version of Elementor or the pro version, you're gonna find a couple of different things down here. So you're probably gonna see or not see this motion effect if you have the free version of Elementor, but don't worry. It's the same thing. So entrance animation, that's what you're gonna have. I'm gonna go through these in a separate tutorial that's for Elementor Pro. I wanna keep this just about the free version. So we're looking at entrance animation. And then down here, we can make it do different things. So we could make it fade in from the left, like that. Or we could, let's see, make it bounce in and up. So we can make it look a little bit more interesting. So have a look through those. You can also change the delay on the animation or the duration so we can make it faster or slower. And then if we wanted to have uh, an image behind our button here, there's a couple of ways we could do it, either in the background section, or if we come up to the section itself, so we click up on edit section, we can then go to style, go to uh, background just up here under classic, and then choose an image. I'm gonna go with this one, so I think it's gonna show up quite nicely. And then all we need to do is change this to cover, no repeat, I'm gonna center it, and then under layout, I'm gonna make it larger. So layout, height, and let's do this minimum height. And now we've got an image behind the button. And of course, from here, if we wanted to, we could bring in a, a title. So we've got a title, and then we could add some text as well. And what we're effectively doing here is creating our own call to action. So we've got a background image, or we could have done a gradient if we'd wanted. We've got a title, we've got some text, and then of course, we've got the button, which is the action we want the website visitor to make by clicking it. Now Elementor do have their own widget for this, so under the widget library, if we search call to action, we've got this one here, and I have a separate tutorial which will show you exactly how to use that. 
But of course, if you're wanting to, you can do it from scratch and build it yourself like this. Now, I wanna show you a couple more things. For example, how we put buttons side by side or how we make it link through to something on the same page so that uh, we get a nice scrolling effect. Because I showed you how to link off site or to a different page, but if you wanna make it scroll down nicely, I'll show you how to do that as well. But if we start with a couple of buttons, if we wanted them here, for example, it's really simple. Uh, under our widgets section, what we would want is an inner section. And again, I've got a tutorial that will show you how to use this. An inner section is effectively creating two sections within a whole section. So it just breaks up the layout. When we've done that, we could grab our button, drag it in. And then if we wanted it on the right, what we could do is, well, we could either right click it and duplicate it and then drag it across, or we could simply copy it, right click and paste. So now we've got our two buttons. If we wanted to bring them close together, all we needed to do is align it. So I'll put this one over on the left, click this one, back to content, alignment on the right, and now they're much closer together. So we can achieve that in another way as well. If we came down here, we could choose two rows, and of course, I could now have a button in each of these, and we could do exactly the same thing. Or if for any reason you need lots of different buttons, once we've done that, we could always come back up here, we could grab another inner section, we could then put that in here, and now we could have two over here and two over there. Or the other way of doing it, as I go into properly in my inner section tutorial, is we could always simply add in another column up here, and then we could start adding a button over here as well. So let's just duplicate this quickly, click and drag, bring that in, and this way you can have lots of different buttons in a line if you want them over the web page. Now, just a note here, obviously this is all about the free version, um, but one of the good things about Elementor Pro is that you can save what you've done. So if we wanted to, on Elementor Pro, you can save something as a global object, which means that instead of having to come down here and you know, creating a row and then coming up to widgets and dragging your button in and designing it all over again, or duplicating it and dragging it, etc. You can just go up under the global section at that point. And when you've got it in the global section, you can very simply just drag it in. And then what you've designed is already there and you can edit it more or not. So if you're doing this a lot, so if you're doing this a lot, then it is worth looking at upgrading to Elementor Pro. It's really not that much for everything that you get. But sticking with the free version, it isn't that difficult just to drag and drop or right click, copy and then paste. So what if we now wanted to be able to click a button and have it scroll down to a separate section? Well, for a start, let's get rid of this for a moment, bring this back just to one button. So I click on this, go to content, go to middle. I'm also gonna get rid of this entrance animation because it's a little bit irritating while I'm trying to do this. So let's just get rid of that, put it back to default. And now let's create something down here that we can have it scroll to. So let's just grab an image quickly, put this in, select an image. Let's go with that one. Insert this medium, medium large. And then let's say we wanted to have some text as well. So we put in some text. And let's put in over 20 years of professional photography experience. So if you're a photographer, for example, we could put that in. We could center this up. Let's put a title above it as well quickly. This heading three. Photography, center it up, style it. I'll rush through this bit because this isn't about the buttons. Okay, so let's say that we've now created this and we've got it exactly as we want it to be looking. Let's just duplicate this across. So we've now got a couple of sections here and I'm just gonna duplicate the whole thing so we've got a bit more space on our page. Okay, so what we wanna do is click this button and we want it to scroll us down and end up down here. So what we need to do is come on down to the section that we want it to scroll to click into the section, come over to advanced, and then under CSS ID, put in whatever you want. So I'm just gonna put in anchor link, and I'm gonna put a hyphen between the two words. So you can put whatever you want here, just don't forget what you put. 
And if it's more than one word, make sure there's a hyphen between it. So then once we've done that, we can come on back up to our button, click into edit, go to content, and then under our link settings, what we're gonna do is get our website here. So it's already in there, but if it wasn't, just type it in. And then what we need to do is, after we've got the forward dash, put in the name of the page that we're on. So I'm currently on the tutorials page, just up here. If this was the about page, I would put in about forward slash, and then what we need to do is put in the pound sign and then anchor link or whatever the text was that you just put in that section. So what we've got is our website address forward slash the name of the page that we're on. Obviously, if this was the home page, it wouldn't be there. And then forward slash pound sign and the CSS ID that we put in to the section before. So now that we've done that, what should hopefully happen is when we click on the button, it scrolls us down the page. So that's just created an anchor link for you, and now you can have buttons that are gonna scroll down the page, which is a really nice modern design on websites. I really like it. And the other thing that you could do, if you didn't want it to be on the same page, it doesn't have to be. So if we did want this to link through to a separate page and scroll down, it's not a problem. If we had an about page, we would simply put in about here, and then on that about page, we would find the section that we wanted, we would click in like we did before, we would go to advanced, we would give it the CSS ID, and then when we click on the button, instead of it scrolling down the current page, it would take us over to that new page, and then it would scroll down to that particular section. So that's how you can use the CSS ID in order to make your buttons scroll around the page and create anchor links for you. And that's pretty much it. I really hope that's helped. You now know how to link to different sections, put buttons side by side, give them a nice animation, obviously put them over an image, all the sort of main things that you'd want to do with Elementor on your web page. If it has helped, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I very much look forward to seeing you on the next one.